In June 2003, investigators discovered a one-piece blue Nike bathing suit and human remains on Whiskey Hill in Palmer, Massachusetts, marking the beginning of the end of the extensive search for 16-year-old Molly Bish, who disappeared exactly three years earlier while working as a lifeguard at Cummins Pond in her hometown of Warren. The findings launched a three-week grid search across 8 to 12 acres of hillsides and woods in the area, resulting in the discovery of several bones and teeth that matched Molly's DNA, effectively concluding the largest missing person search in Massachusetts history. Molly's death, no doubt, was deeply heartrending. She was an honor student and an exceptional athlete with a bright future ahead of her, until her life was so tragically cut short. And though her remains were found three years after she disappeared, the question remains, who killed her and why? Molly Bish was dropped off at her lifeguarding job at Cummins Pond by her mother Magdalene, aka Maggie, at 10 a.m. on June 27, 2000. Around 11 a.m., a woman showed up to Cummins Pond with her children in tow for swimming lessons. When she saw there was no lifeguard on duty, she contacted Park Commissioner Ed Fett, Molly's boss, who came to the pond to check things out before deciding to call the police. Initially, the police assumed Molly may have skipped work, but when they contacted Maggie, they learned that Molly was a responsible young woman who took her job seriously. The police then assumed Molly may have drowned in the pond, but this assumption proved to be a significant misstep in the investigation. Divers searched the pond for several hours, potentially destroying evidence, while search parties scoured the woods surrounding the pond. Maggie had seen a man in the beach parking lot of the pond on the day before Molly disappeared. She described him as a white man with a mustache in his late 40s or early 50s, sitting and smoking in a white car. Thousands of tips were submitted to the police, who turned their focus to searching for the man with the mustache driving a white car. The investigation extended into October. Despite extensive searches around the pond and the surrounding area, no evidence was found. The investigation received over 5,000 tips from across the country. Investigators determined that Molly was abducted within a 5-10 to 10 minute window of arriving at work, and they believed the culprit had prepared and planned to kidnap her ahead of time. 125 white cars matching the description provided by Maggie were searched, but no signs of Molly were found. By June 2001, two possible suspects were identified. Thirteen people were given polygraph tests in connection to Molly's disappearance, and a surprising number of seven people failed the test, which police noted was unusual. The search for evidence continued until the spring of 2003, when a retired law enforcement officer suggested a connection between Molly's disappearance and the unsolved murder of 10-year-old Holly Piranen in nearby Sturbridge in 1993. In the meantime, hunters in the area were questioned, and eventually Molly's bathing suit and remains were found. Molly was buried on her 20th birthday, August 2, 2003, at St. Paul's Cemetery in Warren. Despite her tragic fate being known, there remained a lingering question regarding Molly's killer. Over the years, law enforcement received thousands of tips and followed hundreds of leads, interviewing multiple possible suspects. Three men have been publicly named as suspects, Rodney Stanger, Gerald Batson, and Francis P. Sumner Sr. Rodney Stanger, a 60-year-old man from Southbridge, Massachusetts, was interviewed in 2008. He lived near Cummins Pond in Warren, and he was known to fish and hunt in the area. Family members claimed Stanger had a violent streak and access to a white car. 
Stanger moved to Florida in 2008 and was sentenced to 25 years in prison for stabbing and killing his girlfriend, Crystal Morrison, in 2010. Before Morrison's death, she told her sister that she believed Stanger was responsible for Molly Bish's death. Gerald Battinson, a convicted child rapist, was also questioned in both the Molly Bish and Holly Perrainen cases. Battison attempted suicide in 2011 after being named as a possible suspect in the media. He died in custody in 2014 at Lemuel Shattuck Hospital. The Worcester County District Attorney's Office named Francis Sumner Sr. as a person of interest in Molly Bish's murder in 2021. Sumner, who died at the age of 70 in 2016, operated several auto shops across central Massachusetts and had been convicted of aggravated rape and kidnapping in 1982. He was sentenced to 15 to 18 years for rape and 9 to 10 years for kidnapping. Sumner's most notable connection to Molly's case is his resemblance to a composite sketch provided by Maggie and the fact that he was working at an area auto shop at the time of Molly's disappearance making it likely that he had access to a white vehicle, matching the one seen in the parking lot at Cummins Pond. Despite DNA tests not matching Sumner and evidence not implicating him, the DA's office still considers him a person of interest. Molly's case has been featured on various crime shows, including America's Most Wanted and Unsolved Mysteries. Molly's sister, Heather Bish, is actively advocating for changes in how law enforcement handles missing person cases. The Molly Bish Foundation was created by Molly's family to promote familial searching of DNA profiles and law enforcement databases and create safety kits for families. The foundation and state legislators are pushing for a statewide DNA database to generate leads and exonerate wrongfully convicted people. The Bish family has requested that Molly's case be transferred to the Worcester County District Attorney's Office to the Hampton County DA's Office since her remains were discovered in Hampton County in 2023. The investigation continues and the Worcester County District Attorney's Office still is receiving tips on the case. The latest development in the case was in June 2024, with new, more advanced DNA testing being performed on Molly's swimsuit to see if this could point to her killer's true identity once and for all. Thanks for watching, guys. Let's hope that if Molly's killer is still out there, he can soon be brought to justice. If you have any information about Molly's murder, please call the Massachusetts State Police tip line, whose number I'm leaving in the description. Please keep Molly's family in your thoughts, and remember, don't get scared out of sorts.